for the Lord Jesus, a wonderful round of applause. My dear brethren, this is another meeting of great power that God has given us for our enlightenment. Today is a day of great blessings, it's a day of communion. Speaking of communion, I'll be wrapping up in this meeting a series of six chapters, a sequential study that we started last Monday and since today is Saturday, and we have been learning about Psalm 35, verse number 27. I was praying to God the other week at around three in the morning and God called this psalm to my mind and showed me so many things in this psalm that I said, my God, I have to convey it to the people. And glory to God because I have done that. If you haven't heard it, or if you have, there are new things for you to hear and learn today. And you're going to hear something very important. Whenever we are seeking a blessing from the Lord God, we are shunning some temptation in the name of Jesus and rebuking the enemy. That means that we are prompting and we are causing the Lord's righteousness to become into action and favoring his righteousness. The Bible says the following, Let them shout for joy and be glad, who favor my righteous cause. And let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So whenever we are favoring God's cause, when we believe wholeheartedly that it will happen, interceding for someone, blessing an individual, or blessing ourselves, seeking the Lord's guidance, seeking the Lord's wisdom, it means we are favoring God's righteous cause. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. That is how we love the Lord, by having his commandments and keeping them. And God loves us by making us promises and keeping them, fulfilling them. When we do our part and the Lord does his, so if I favor God's righteous cause, if I want God's righteousness into action, I have to do two things. I have to always shout for joy and my soul must be connected to God through praise and my spirit connected to him through joy. The presence of Jesus fills us with joy. In John 16, 22, I will see you again, second part, and your heart will rejoice and your joy no one will take from you. So if I keep this feeling of joy, I keep in touch with the Lord. He opens the way and we use that to get to him. And with my praise, brethren, I am simply connecting my soul directly to the Lord, my spirit and my soul, my power of decision. So I have to shout for joy and be glad always, brethren. The Bible mentions joy quite a lot, and we'll see that. For instance, in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 12, and the verse we want is number 3. Let's see what the Lord God tells us here in the scriptures. Isaiah 12, 3. Therefore with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. But it's metaphorical. Obviously there are no wells on earth filled with salvation that heals all diseases and solves all your problems. Only physical material wells. It's Isaiah 12, verse number three. If you can't find it in your Bible, the verse is shown on the big screens so that everybody can read it. So be filled with joy, not with sadness, not with resentment, because with joy we will draw from the wells, the wells of salvation. There are many wells of salvation. All the revelations from God, the scripture is a well of salvation. One sole miracle gives us the understanding that we need, but we must draw from that with joy. Without joy, you will never be able to draw from it. The code, the key that opens that well, is the feeling of joy. And with this joy, we will draw the revelation that we most need. With that revelation, we will be able to draw the power. We will be able to draw whatever it is that we need to overcome evil. I understood during those early morning hours that when I'm upset at someone or at myself, there are people who bother you every day and you get upset and say, won't they ever stop? They have to stop, right? Why don't they come to their senses? I've warned them 10 times, but don't they understand? And sometimes you get a little aggravated, but you can't. You must rejoice at all times because the Bible says, shout for joy and be glad. My soul cannot disconnect from God when I shout for joy and my spirit cannot disconnect when I am glad. If I stop shouting, that is, whenever I sing praises to God, that urge, 
that urge to praise God by actually singing all the songs we know or those the Lord gives us through our revelations. And if I fail to be glad, if I allow any hassle to enter my heart and I get hurt, then I simply no longer am in the position to, to give the opportunity for the righteousness of God to operate in me. So in order for me not to have any hindrances or any problems, I must always shout for joy uh, to the Lord with all of my soul, praising the Lord, and with my spirit becoming happy in the presence of God. Then revelation comes. I already have so much joy that I, I will be able to draw water, draw revelation, the power that I need, the faith, and then I am able to overcome in the name of Jesus. It happens automatically, brethren. We must keep learning how to walk with God and the doors start to open and we open our eyes and we keep drawing nearer to God. Therefore, with joy, it's a commandment of the Lord. You will draw water from the wells of salvation. Don't attempt to draw the water without joy. The wells will be closed. You don't have the key. It won't open. But God, speak to me. God, I can't take it anymore. I'm about to die. You will die. Lord, please forgive me. <laughs> I'm not having the correct attitude. Please fill my heart with happiness. Show it to me through your word. Then all of a sudden your spirit, it will be happy. It will be glad, joyful, praising the Lord. And the word will be revealed to you. And you draw that which you need. You don't have to make that much of an effort. The Lord doesn't need that kind of thing for you to be talking like He just wants you to speak up. To confess and the moment you confess believe and you'll see the Lord will operate in your life amen today is the day for us to understand these words let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause and let them say continually do not stop do not turn back don't fail to believe that the Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant God doesn't want his servant in squalor and scarcity in any sense not only financially but also through revelation and also in happiness he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant the lord certainly wants to see all of us in high spirits prospering and overcoming and enjoying the good things in life today is the day for you to be greatly blessed we will pray so believe in him because after the prayer the lord will have operated in your life quoting once again psalm 35 Verse 27, let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause and let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So God is giving us today the secret for us to be victorious. In the next verse, King David says the following. This is verse 28. And my tongue shall speak of your righteousness. Oftentimes we want to speak, but we simply cannot. Dr. Suarez, it seems like something is lacking so that I can speak of his righteousness because you're not shouting for joy and you are not glad in the presence of the Lord. And when you speak, you are not authorized. Always do what God advises. Forget about what you think or what some preacher has said and hold fast to what God tells you. When you are glad and you shout, you are shouting for joy, then you will become able to speak of God's righteousness and walk in God's righteousness. Psalm 35, 28, and my tongue shall speak of your righteousness. My tongue will have the power to rebuke evil. My tongue will have the power to invoke your presence and receive your assistance. And my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all day long without interruption. There will be no blind spot when you won't understand anything because God will be blessing you in the name of Jesus. In the book of Isaiah, let's turn to that book, there's a message for us in chapter 35 starting with verse 8. Jesus was speaking through the prophet Isaiah about the work that he was going to do on our behalf, the work that he was going to accomplish. When he came to earth, it's the spirit of prophecy using Isaiah to teach us, and we have to study this and learn. So he said in Isaiah 35, verse 8, Isaiah 35, verse number 8, A highway shall be there, and a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness, a separate way, and why? The unclean shall not pass over it but it shall be for others. It's the highway of faith, brethren. 
Understand this word. When God gives you faith, he opens up a highway for you to get to him. The unclean, the devil, the power of darkness won't pass through that highway. It is holy. It is separated. It's prepared only for those God chooses. The highway God shows to me is not meant for you, and yours is not meant for me. Not for my son or his, for me. Each one of us receives their own direction to walk along that highway. Verses 8 and 9 now. A highway shall be there and a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. When they get on that highway, they will not go astray, and they will be healed. No lion shall be there. This is a figure of speech. Nor shall any ravenous beast go up on it. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. There's no such thing as, on the highway of my faith, there are demons harassing me. No, 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 you haven't taken God's road, the holy highway. The highway he opens for us is holy. You can rest assured knowing that it is holy. No one gets in the way because they just can't put any obstacles in your way. It's clear that the true way is Jesus. And those who are walking on that highway won't find any evil. They'll only find good things. Let's move on. In verse number 10, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This is God telling us about salvation. We are the ransomed of the Lord. It's an allegory of the Israelites that were going to captivity but would return. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Our return to Jesus because man was expelled from the presence of the Lord because of Adam's sin must be with singing. And it is with singing. Those who truly have an encounter with Jesus and enjoy salvation, they come with singing. They want more and more of Jesus. They want to obtain all that the Lord has for them. It's like Jesus told us, a man was walking down a field and found a treasure. Then he, he hid the treasure, and next he sold all of his possessions and bought the field. There's nothing that makes us happier than a field like that with a treasure, with salvation, with Jesus. So those who are ransomed, and if you haven't been ransomed, you need to seek God and say, God, I haven't been ransomed. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy, with happiness, with a joyful heart, with everlasting joy, not with temporary joy, but everlasting joy, a joy that has no beginning and no end, with everlasting joy with on their heads. There's no such thing as waking up in a bad mood. Otherwise, you'll have to examine your salvation. Those who are of God, a thousand may fall at their side and 10,000 at their right hand, but they know it shall not come near them. They simply keep on marching with resolve to fulfill their mission. They shall obtain joy and gladness. They'll be fulfilled. And that's what we have to obtain. Even if you're fighting a very difficult battle, nothing can take away your joy. Jesus said, I will see you again and your heart will rejoice and your joy no one will take from you. The joy that Jesus gives to us, brethren. There is no pressure. There is no anguish. There is no ordeal. There's no disease. There's no betrayal that can deprive us from that joy. We have already obtained that joy and gladness and no one will be able to take them from us. And sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Don't accept it. Brethren, you just have to be in fellowship with God. Shout for joy and be glad. Those who favor God's righteousness and sighing shall flee away. It's history now. Those mishaps those ordeals that caught you by surprise. What's going on? My God, if something is happening, let's solve it right now. We will call on the power of God. His power will come down. He will do the work and the victory will become yours. Still in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse number 12. 5511 is an old friend of ours that we have studied many times in these meetings. Isaiah 55. We'll start with verse 11, and then we'll get to verse number 12. 
In 55, 11, God says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. The word that comes forth from his mouth has great power in itself, and it should never return to God void. And this means that God won't receive it, and it will stand by our side. There are people missing out on a lot of things, and it's because they're not using it. And it will testify against them on the last day. The Lord sent you. He spoke to your heart. You understood him, and yet he didn't use you. What a great waste of an opportunity. And it shall prosper in the things for which God sent it. Now let's move on to verse 12. Why will it prosper? For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. If God has given you guidance, get rid of all of your problems. Follow the guidance of God. You must always go out with joy, and you will be led out with peace. Always pay attention to the Word of God. Dr. Suarez, people have already told me, and it's happened on various occasions, that when I set out to do something for the Lord, something bad happens in my household. My wife will get sick, or my children, or it's me. Nothing bad has ever happened to me. I have no problem at all with the devil. My only commitment is to obey the Lord God. When I obey Him, there are no problems. The flesh sometimes won't obey Him because it's lazy, but I overcome and I obey Him. Brethren, if this is happening to you, it means you still haven't understood that which God says here in verse number 12. For you shall go out with joy. Don't go out with sadness. Go out with gladness, knowing that victory is yours when we go out to war. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace and will not be led out with tribulations. And let's read on. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you. Nature itself will acknowledge that we are leaving. And all of these, uh, uh, these words are metaphorical. They're figures of speech the Lord uses so that we, we are able to understand things. It's like when Israel got out of Egypt and the, the Red Sea opened up and they could walk on dry land because God was ahead of them. The minute that you go out with joy and with faith, God is ahead of you. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing, spiritually speaking. And what else will take place in our lives? They shall break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Oh, glory to God. It's just like being in a parade. Brethren, the going out to obtain your blessing is like a parade for a conqueror. Picture yourself as a national hero. Our country is at war against another, and you managed to set us free. All of us will be lined up along the great avenue, and as you walk by, everyone will be clapping for you. That's what will happen to you. All the birds of the field will be clapping for you. The mountains and the hills will break forth into singing. You're victorious. Jesus told us that whenever someone is saved and accepts him, is freed from the kingdom of darkness, there is great joy in heaven. Folks, this is something really beautiful. So don't shun joy. Be glad and God shall grant you victory. Now let's pray. God, what a beautiful message, God. Our victory over a problem, Father, is something celebrated by nature itself. The mountains and the hills break forth into singing. God, may your people not be fools. And even if they are, may they not go astray. But may they stop being foolish. See how many millions of people are praying with me throughout the world. God, I will bless these people right now. I will use your authority to set all of them free. As a minister of the word of God, I paralyze all the works of the enemy, and I say, devil, it's over. Take everything that is yours, go away, and don't oppress them. I'm giving you this command. I am speaking to cancer now. I'm addressing the illness that has disturbed the normal balance of their body, causing them to have diabetes. Their blood pressure is high. The problem is serious. The platelets count is low. People who can't hear well and can't see well, I'm addressing you now, spirit of defeat. 
Leave these people now. People of God, become blessed right now. God, your word is the truth. And your word is setting these people free right now. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Let's watch, in the name of the Lord Jesus, the real-life drama. On December 2013, Noeli felt sick during the night and had to be rushed to the hospital. I felt sick, I felt nauseous, and I felt as if something was pressuring my heart in an upward movement, right? I also felt dizzy, and it seemed I was having a heart attack, so then I called a friend to help me. When I arrived there, she was leaning against the wall. She was unable to walk. When I arrived at the hospital, I first underwent heart exams to see what the, what the problem was. And then they examined my head. She was taken to the emergency room. She had an ECG, you know, and an MRI in her head. And they didn't find any problem in my head. So I was sent to the ear doctor. I was having a very serious bout of, of dizziness. I just couldn't stand up straight. Then they found out that she had labyrinthitis. She stayed in my house for around 15 days. She was like a robot, moving her body from one direction to another in a very slow motion. She couldn't stand or bend over. It was impossible. I was so dizzy that I would fall down. And the doctor said I couldn't fall down because at my age I'd break a bone. I took the medication and it didn't produce the results that it was supposed to produce. I took two types of medication. When that infirmity struck Noelie's life, she had already been attending the Grace of God Church for seven years. I was called to be a sponsor. Even before I started attending the Grace of God Church through television, through the church's paid TV, I was watching the Faith Show continuously. In the mornings, afternoons, and evenings, I said, Jesus, you have borne all diseases on the cross, so I clung to Jesus with all my strength. I started to ordain, and I felt in my heart that when Dr. Suarez came to Porto Alegre, I would be healed. Then Dr. Suarez came here on April 16, at 9 o'clock in the morning, so I said, I will go get my blessings. She said, I will go to Dr. Suarez today, and I'm sure I will be healed. Today is the day, Jesus, today. The first prayer he made that day was for labyrinthitis. Then he asked all those who were feeling dizzy to go up on the stage. I felt something from the soles of my feet up to my head as if something were operating on me, you know. It was so good that I can't explain it. What has God done? On December 1st, I had a bout of dizziness. I fell down and I couldn't get up because... And from then on? I was so dizzy that if I turned around like this, I would have to prop myself up against a wall. And now? Now I'm feeling well, thanks be to God. Wow. Yesterday I said, Dr. Suarez will be there at 9 a.m., so I'll be able to be there to oh, see my Oh, glory to blessing. God. She came prepared, thanks brethren. Be to God. It was a very pleasant and beautiful moment. I am thankful to Jesus. I simply lack words. She's always happy. She says, I'm healed. I'm healed. I haven't felt dizziness and I don't take medication anymore. I'm fine. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. We have to believe in him and trust in him. He wants us to have faith. We have to believe him because he loves us so much. I have been born again as if I had been born on that very day. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, you are so awesome. Have you noticed that it's even possible to link that story to the word God gave us today? The word that goes forth from his mouth shall not return void. And why? Because you shall go out with joy and also be led out with peace. My brethren, if God doesn't exist, how could something like that happen? 
Do you think I have the power to influence someone with the power of my mind and make them do what I want? I'm a real genius and I should be acclaimed because not only a psychologist who studies minds can do that or even a doctor. How can it happen in my meetings where I preach for around 20 minutes or half an hour, I don't know exactly how long, and people become healed? This is God and this is God speaking to you. You have to follow his guidance and in doing so, you can rest assured that God will bless you. Let's go to the question and answer segment. If I repeatedly pray for a problem, will I be doubting the word of the Lord Jesus? Maybe you are. It's up to you to answer if that's the case. You may not have achieved that moment of faith yet. We have to see what's happening when there's a problem. Because when the revelation arrives, you just have to ordain. You command and the evil is gone. Amen? Now let's go to the Open Your Heart segment for today. Dr. Suarez, I've departed from the ways of the Lord for five years. My son and I were baptized, but I went back to my addiction to alcohol and adultery. Sometimes I attend the Catholic Church with my wife because she doesn't want to attend an evangelical church with me. I don't miss any faith show, which I frequently watch on the wee hours of the morning. Two years ago, I fell sick, so I stopped drinking liquor and I stopped cheating on my wife. I got depressed and I'm undergoing treatment and I've had sinful thoughts in the night. And when I see the woman I used to have an affair with, I change drastically. It seems something evil takes hold of me. I've prayed and sought my deliverance. Dr. Suarez, I'm utterly powerless to seek. I need your help and I need to read the Bible and watch the face show. Please help me. My brother, there is a word from Jesus in the book of Revelation, which is just for you. It's remember where you have fallen and then repent. That's what you have to do. You know it's demonic. You even feel the evil presence. And this is something awful. You could be so saving your entire family, but maybe you're destroying them because it carves an indelible mark in the heart of the ones who are cheated on, which is your wife in this case, and in the heart of the family that see you defeated by vices and other wrongdoings. Repent. Come to Jesus and he will change your life. Let me pray now for those of you who are at home. God, first I'm going to pray for those who are watching us on TV, who are troubled, in need of some help, those people who are feeling a burning sensation in their stomach. It seems as if they drank caustic soda instead of coffee because it's burning so. There are so many infirmities, no matter what they are, because I'm going to use the power and I will bind all the evil forces and I say, Get out of these people in the name of Jesus. Amen.